Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about requirements gathering. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, how do you feel the requirements gathering process has evolved over the past few decades? Well, I haven't been al well. I have been alive for the past few decades, but I haven't been a programmer for the past few decades. Uh, but I can tell you what I see is the one of the biggest differences between how software development is, for the most part, being done now, how we how we gather requirements as of today, and how the people that I work with who have been doing decades long uh, requirements gathering. So the way the main difference I've seen is that the requirements gathering that used to go on was happening with more people and the distance between the people who are going to do the implementation of whatever feature we're building like the software development team for example and the actual consumer what's a is a lot longer you have a lot more people in between, or a lot, a lot of more middlemen uh, between the software developer and the user. Whereas, where like for me, the way that everything so practically always worked is that at most there's one person between me and the user, and in many cases I talk directly to the user. Like uh, that is probably the biggest difference, and I've only found that to be more effective because I've always, it always comes back to the same thing when I'm de when I'm usually dealing with the old school uh, men and women who still have like architects and like uh, these sorts of people who like they design an entire system without ever talking to the users and this is why I, or, like, I, I hear the same story over and over and over and over again which is that the users are unhappy with the functionality and the, then I ask the like the you know, the architects and the product the managers and all these people okay what like, uh, how can we improve this oh well yeah we, we had to do it because of these reasons and so forth and so forth and we had these limitations in the systems and I go well surely you should be able to accommodate the requests of the users because if you're building a system that the users don't like then you're not good doing a good job and they go yeah but like the, we haven't we don't really keep these sorts of dialogues with the users and I go okay so why are you not talking with the users because reasons like they there's never a good reason they never talk in, to, to the users for some reason they get their business requirements from some other manager so they never actually talk with the agent if you ever want you want to see true pain and suffering in the world go and take a uh, have a go walk through one of those really really big corporations their support staff ask them about all their internal systems ask them how fun it is to work with their different company platforms like just ask them how if they feel like that is as efficiently working as it can possibly be and the reason why you get to that point is usually as I said because you have technical people who get business requirements from someone who is not the end consumer of these systems who doesn't like we don't even talk to the actual support staff or the people working in the different uh, se sections who manage and use all these systems in in a proper way and so we end up building sort of like we, we end you end up building like these sort of ad hoc functionalities that don't really fit at all and turns out I mean it does do the job but it, nobody's really at the on the user end usually happy about it it's as I said it's sort of the waterfall problem it's very difficult for you to build the right thing if you don't have a feedback cycle w that includes the person who's doing the actual work and that is I think the biggest difference because today and this is one of the reasons I argue that disruption is coming is very feasible for practically any digital company who wants to take on one of these older like behemoths uh, providers of the solutions and so forth the reason being very simple because if you can get a hold of the actual consumer of these sorts of products that are very old and very stale and so forth and you can get like I mean there are of course other complications but the heart and soul of it is that if you get to talk to these people it's actually 
you will find that a lot of these older systems and the these sort of sort of working ways of developing software they're really only there because you have an outdated way of doing work and usually these really big clunky systems they are designed by people who are trying to maximize their customization ability and so forth and so forth so they're trying to add as much as humanly possible to their platforms because they want to make as much money as possible and cater to the largest amount of people but if you talk to the actual users they're in very very rare it's very rare that they're very happy with these sorts of big platforms even though these platforms of course make money but the modern way if like the top-notch IT companies they usually will vouch for I hope at the very least that they do a lot of user focused requirements and it comes down to actually interviewing users you do user journeys with them you do proof of concept feedback uh, feedback session etc etc this is the biggest change at least from my perspective how we do things because the the realization we've had in the few fa fa few last like the last few years is that we've reached a point where it's no longer feasible consumers expect more of us than to get like this behemoth system and like nobody's going to read a manual to learn how to use your digital product if they have a choice and this is where we've grown into this user focused and user obsessed way of taking requirements where you actually want to talk to the user you want to get their feedback and so forth and managing that and maintaining that relationship is key in order for you to be certain to to get like a really good modern workflow going because most startups and most of the modern like big companies and so forth work in a more user focused fashion not exclusively of course but it is definitely a trend that I have seen so what I want you to take away from this is that I would say that the biggest change in requirements gathering is that it used to be the case that uh, the software developers very, they barely knew who was consuming their systems and that may not have changed all that much in some companies and you usually had a workflow where you basically you had tons of requirements without actually truly on ever talking to your end consumers because those requirements are coming from other managers within the company who are in them who are themselves not users of the system that's why we came up with the term dog fooding which some people think is like uh, you know a good idea and i kind of go if you don't if you need to dog food your system like the idea is supposed that you're going to learn from it but i mean for me it's sort of like you should dog food yeah absolutely but you could start by talking to the people who are eating, you're selling the dog food too because you haven't even done that which is like that's the to me the like eating your own uh, dog food in your system is like the second step the first step is to talk to the customer which is as i said not the norm if you if you go back a little while it has become the norm in the more modern companies as of today it's still not where it should be but it is definitely the way things are moving so a shorter distance between the software development team and the end consumer is definitely the, the, the trend uh, that I've seen at the very least have a great day